ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಾಶ್ವಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೀತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಮನಕ್ಕು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿಹಾವದೀಪಲಸ್ತುಮಾಭಿಜಾವೈ ಇ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಶಾಂತಶಾಂತಿ ಧಾತು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ಸಂಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಜೀವಾಕ್ಷಾತ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಕೃಸುಬಂತಾತಿರ್ಧಾತು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರೋ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ದಂಡಮೋ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಸಂಭವ ಮಂಡಸ್ಯಾಂತಸ್ತೋಕಾಚಿ we saw the first five chapters the first chapter was about arjuna's confusion in the battlefield and his shoka shoka and moha to answer that the second chapter explain who are those panditas and what do they talk about unlike what arjuna is talking about arjuna is confused he is talking like a pandita without having panditya so that is the delusion there whatever he thinks is to be done that is not to be done thereby the second chapter began which was sankhya sankhya yoga then having talked about sankhya in contrast what is the karma yoga path so and the goal being the same but still that was not clear in the third chapter even after karma yoga so he began the fourth chapter where arjuna was still confused as to wanting to take sanyasa but not having clarity as to why did the praise why was the praise for sanyasa as well as for karma that was actually in the fifth chapter but in fourth chapter also in the context he had asked so if you look at the fourth chapter beginning he was still unsure as to see the uh, fourth chapter whereby um, he had asked this all this vyavastha has been created by me said said bhagwan after in the fourth chapter so i am asking because there is a there is a confusion as to how the chapters are going i am just showing how the chapters are progressing uh, the second or chapter onwards the fifth chapter it's it's a single unit although they are divided with uh, titles you see the subject matter is still karma yoga and sankhya yoga jnana yoga there is no specific division chapter wise uh, you cannot make it predominantly you can say there is karma yoga or predominantly there is jnana yoga but it is mixed up through the bhashya there is clarity as to what is the context in each and every shloka so here you see this is jnana karma sanyasa yoga having talked about sankhya yoga which is jnana yoga in second chapter in third chapter karma yoga but karma yoga was covered in second chapter also so there was an overlap but predominantly what was talked about based on that the uh, the chapter gets its title but here jnana karma sanyasa yoga both are mentioned here and here you see uh, what is the the, the upaya this karma yoga upaya and gnan nishtha lakshana all this has been mentioned in the introduction by bhagwan bhashyakara in the fourth chapter and then he explains as to all this is introduced by me it was already taught by me but arjuna asks you know um, he is confused about krishna but then later also he says uh, the vyavastha of what is this uh, uh, dharma to be done what has to be done the kartavya karma all that has been explained and then uh, all the uh, vibhaga is talked about here of uh, what he had talked about for manushya par sarvasya there is a vibhaga here and then yeah chaturvarnya maya srutam guna karma vibhaksha so vibhaga guna tah karma tahascha so all that has been talked about and thereby also what is the duty whether one has to take sanyasa or 
karma follow karma yoga all that is hinted in the fourth chapter also although bhagwan didn't directly tell him what should you do in third chapter also he had asked so here you look at it the same idea is continuing in the uh, fourth chapter also and uh, arjuna is still unsure as to what he should do because both are praised thereby the fifth chapter began with his question as to sanyasa and karma both you are praising so you tell me ek uh, nishchitya he says uh, you tell me what i should do ekameva ekameva tanme bruhi sunishchitam bruhi etayoh thereby sanyasa and karma yoga or sankhya and karma yoga or jnana yoga and karma yoga is it continuing topic it is actually continuing throughout the gita but here you see the, the uh, first five chapter second to fifth chapter especially has the same topic now what should a person do when he has jnana so if arjuna thinks that he has jnana but still do you have nishta if you have that kind of a jnana then nishta will be possible for you but without that uh, without that kind of a jnana which is sustainable it is not going to fructify into moksha you have to have jnana which will which can be retained therefore karma yoga should be analyzed whether it is sufficient it has led to sufficient chitta shuddhi thereby you see that he has hinted in the fifth chapter ending he has hinted in the fifth chapter ending as to what is this dhyana which will lead to nishtha after uh, after jnana what is this uh, dhyana so he has hinted in the end and then uh, sixth chapter starts which is called as dhyana yoga so bhagwan bhashyakar introduces the sixth chapter by saying atita antara adhyayante atita atita which is gone by and antara without a uh, without any gap so immediately preceding atita antara adhyayante at the end of the chapter which has gone by immediately immediately preceding chapter at the end of that dhyana yogasya dhyana yogasya samyak darshanam prati antarangasya towards the vision which is finally moksha aikat aikyam that is samyak darshana aikya aikyam prati or samyak darshanam prati antarangasya dhyana yoga antarangasya dhyana yogasya which is antaranga antaranga to what samyak darshana and what is how is samyak darshana possible in the brahma shruti it is said darshana is what drashtavya you should have uh, atma vare drashtavya shrotavya mantavya nididhyasitavya that is the marga for darshana so towards the darshana atma darshana samyak darshana ekatva darshana towards that antaranga antaranga which is dhyana uh, dhyana yoga and that is called in bhradarneka upanishad as what nididhyasana shravana mana nididhyasana is the path to samyak darshana therefore nididhyasana is antaranga is included in the path to uh, means to samyak darshana that is called as dhyana yoga here antaranga se sutra bhuta ha shloka ha the shloka which are like aphorisms we have seen that they are sutra bhuta like sutra which are those 27 onwards in the fifth chapter sparshan krutva bahi hi ityadaya sparshan krutva bahi bayan so those which are outside you keep outside and uh, do not get dragged don't carry them in the mind ityadaya upadishta ha these are taught in the fifth chapter ending so sutra has been taught now sutra has to be expanded what is the meaning of that the entire dhyana yoga is summed up in two shlokas 27th and 28th in the fifth chapter tesham vritti sthaniya vritti is a is like a commentary one of the commentaries vritti sthaniya ayam shashto adhyaya arabhyate this sixth chapter is begun as ayam shashto adhyaya this sixth chapter is a vritti sthaniya vritti sthaniya means has a place of vritti on the shlokas on the sutra bhuta shlokas so commentary tatra dhyana yogasya bahirangam karma iti so tatra dhyana yogasya bahirangam karma the karma is bahiranga to dhyana yoga dhyana yoga is antaranga to 
the antaragunu samyak darshana and dhyana yogasya bahirangam karma karma is that which leads to dhyana yoga so it is it is not part of dhyana yoga in dhyana while doing dhyana you cannot do karma although dhyana itself chintana can be called as a subtle karma it is not that kind of a karma which is prescribed as an upasana upasana is different from dhyana yoga this dhyana yoga is not meditating upon uh, some uh, devata of a yajna that is also dhyana but that dhyana is called as upasana technically in karma kanda that falls in the karma kanda so that is also meditation this is also meditation but this meditation is on the tattva because it is antaranga to samyak darshana that is not antaranga that is karma that is bahiranga to dhyana yoga uh, to uh, samyak darshana as well as dhyana yoga also this dhyana yoga is separate from that karma or upasana so karma is that which will lead to chitta shuddhi which will make uh, shravana possible manana possible and thereby dhyana yoga possible so it is bhairanga karma iti yavat uh, iti iti yavat dhyana yoga yoga arohana samarthaha tavat grahasthena adhikritena kartavyam karma ityatah tat stauti anashrita iti anashrita iti beginning with anashrita this is the first shloka we will see that and then continue the vyakhyana the second uh, the puro paksha tatra dhyana yoga se bhai bhairang karma iti karma is outside of this dhyana yoga you have to practice it before yavat that is explained by the statement yavat dhyana yoga arohana samarthaha tavat as long as one is uh, one is preparing arohana is actually Uh, you know mounting or getting onto the pedestal but of dhyana so to get to dhyana yoga and becoming capable of dhyana yoga one has to continue karma till one attains the status of being capable of doing dhyana otherwise without karma and chitta shuddhi without chitta shuddhi one cannot do dhyana mind has to be concentrated enough mind can be concentrated only when Uh, when it does not have a bulk of things to do you cannot say that i have to do this i have to do that uh, this sparshan krutva bahihi bahyan is not possible by uh, bahyan sparshan bahihi krutva then dhyana begins this keeping things outside is not possible unless you have a lot of things to do so after you do everything that has to be done then there is chitta shuddhi then dhyana will be possible so he says dhyana dhyana yoga arohana samarthaha yavat tavat grahasthena adhikritena that till then tavat till then grahasta by a grahasta who is adhikrita who is an adhikari who has been told that you do this karma this will give you chitta shuddhi thereby kartavyam karma karma kartavyam eva karma karma has to be done ityataha therefore tat stauti without praising karma you cannot without praising anything you cannot uh, get anyone to do anything it has to be praised whether it is really so it's a different matter but uh, they, there can be a praise possible so bhagwan bhashyakara introduced the first shloka as not idam itham in first shloka if you take the meaning literally without the bhashya if you take the meaning literally then which is what people do today people talk about it i mean why take sanyasa you know you can be at home and do everything that you want and still be like a sanyasi without attachment that mental sanyasa i am not saying it is not possible i am saying it is difficult and in case it is possible still this shloka which is uh, the first shloka of the sixth chapter is not literal if you take it literally it it may benefit us as in saying that okay uh, i can stay at home and still be a sanyasi but uh, it will be contradictory literal meaning of this shloka will be contradictory to shruti as well as smruti and this very smruti where bhagwan krishna has uh, asked has uh, has taught sanyasa in the earlier chapters and the later chapter also he uh, teach sanyasa as a prescribed duty or he'll reveal it as a prescribed duty in shastras 
and that we will see in the bhashya also now let's look at the shloka why it should not be taken literally first we will look at what it's saying first shloka says shri bhagavan uvacha anashita karma phalam karyam karma karoti yah sasanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnir na chakriya so i'll not go into all details i'll say karma phalam anashrita i'll just make an anvaya so that we don't have to go through this again karma phalam anashrita uh, anashrita one who is not dependent one who is anashrita na ashrita ashrita on what so this ashrita this is one second case here uh, so karma phalam an anashrita who is not dependent on so this anashrita itself has a meaning of dependent on depending on or dependent on so uh, here if you see one who is not depending kartari one who is not depending on or dependent on on what karma phala meaning he is not targeting karma phala when he is doing any karma so karma yogi so anashrita karma phalam karma phalam anashrita uh, karyam karma yah karoti karyam karma yah karoti sah sanyasi that is that person is a sanyasi karyam is it's a kritya pratyaya yat there are six kritya kritya pratyaya kritya ha yat kya nyat and then tavyat tavyani ar so there are these six pratyaya so, all have the same meaning so karya means kartavyam kartavyam karma tavya if you take or karaniyam karma so one who does prescribed duty so karya is prescribed and karma means duty that one who does prescribed duty how without expecting results that's the meaning of this that person sah sanyasi that person is sanyasi and not only a sanyasi sah sanyasi yogi cha sah sanyasi cha yogi cha and on the, on the other hand what is it so so far it is good this meaning can be taken as literal so to say sanyasi as in he also can be called as sanyasi but na niragni hi cha akriya cha akriya one who has no kriya kriya na vidyate asya sa akriya and agni hi niragni hi so uh, one who for, uh, niragni hi one who is nirag uh, so niragni hi niragni hi na cha akriya what does this mean niragni hi akriya niragni hi sanyasi na bhavati yogi na bhavati and akriya sanyasi na bhavati yogi na bhavati that is the kind of meaning that you get from here so in contrast a person who has given up agni hi she is not a sanyasi uh, one who does keeps the agni keeps the yajna agni and does the ahutis without expecting any results that person is a sanyasi and yogi as well whereas this niragni hi is not a sanyasi or a yogi akriya without any kriya so here if you look at it nowhere has it been mentioned niragni hi can be a sanyasi as in an ashrama sanyasi akriya can also be an ashrama sanyasi but if niragni can also mean one who is not a sanyasi but who is a householder without agni hi and householder who has given up karma without kriya so that meaning is also possible if you take this as a sanyasi and you see that a person so here you have to say nacha niragni hi yogi cha sanyasi eva na bhavati only niragni eva na bhavati so that is the meaning you have to take if you take ashrama sanyasa ashrama sanyasi so i'll just leave this here uh, dangling we'll uh, look at it when we revisit this shloka so that is the meaning here and therefore uh, bhagwan bhashyakara says grahasthena adhikritena kartavyam karma tavat ityatah tat stauti tat tat kartavyam karma stauti he praises bhagwan krishna praises that karma as one who does, does this uh, kartavyam karma karyam karma yah karoti sa sanyasi cha yogi cha so if you see that a person 
need not take sannyasa while doing karma without expecting results that karma yogi himself is a yogi as well as sannyasi. He is not only a karma yogi, he is also a sannyasi. If that kind of a uh, protsana is given to a person, uh, specifically Arjuna in this context or people like Arjuna, then they will indulge in karma, they will get chitta shuddhi and when the uh, chitta is ripe enough for jnana to take place, then these questions won't arise there as to whether I should take sannyasa, what should I do, all these ideas get dropped off, therefore it is a praise. There is an objection to this. Nanu, kimartam, kimartam dhyana yoga arohana sima karanam. Why do you make a limit, why do you draw a line to this adhikritena kartam in karma? Tavatu. Only till one is, uh, one is capable enough for dhyana yoga. If a person is able to practice Dhyana Yoga, meaning Nididhyasana, one who can stay in the Tattva, why do you draw that line there? Let him continue. Let him continue Karma Yoga even during Nididhyasana. So this is the objection there. Kimartham Dhyana Yoga Arohana Sima Karanam Yavata Anushtheyam Eva Vihitam Karma Yavat Jeevam So he says Anushtheyam Karma Vihitam Vihitam karma anushtheyam eva. Yavad jiva anushtheyam eva. As long as you are alive, you have to do vihita karma. Need not give up. So therefore this sima karanam, drawing a line, border line saying that, okay, are you, uh, are you able to do dhyana yoga? Are you samartha? Then drop the karma. Take the sannyasa. Why should you do that? Let him continue. So Bhagavan Bhashyakar answers, no, that is not right. Yavad jiva you should not do. So as long as you are alive, you keep on doing karma, that is not right. Why? No. Arurukshor Mune Yogam Karma Karana Muchyate. In the third shloka itself, Bhagavan Bhashyakara says that, Krishna is going to say that, Arurukshoho Mune Yogam Karma Karana Muchyate. What is the shloka saying? Will you look at basic meaning? Not look at Anvaya Ityadi. The shloka says, Arurukshor Mune Yogam Karma Karana Muchyate. Yoga Arudasya Tasyeva Shamak Karana Muchyate. So two categories are made here. Arurukshoho Munehe. For a Muni, who is Arurukshuhu? Arurukshu means what? Like Mumukshuhu. Sananta Dhatu. Arudum Ichati. Arudum Ichuhu. Arudum Ichuhu means one who is wanting to do Dhyana. So Aruruksha, we will see this, Aruruksha is, uh, here you see, uh, so Dhyana Yoga chapter, so Aruruksha ho, um, Arurum Ichu Muner Yogam, so that Munihi who wants to do Nididhyasana, Dhyana, Karma Karan Uchyate and uh, Yoga, so you see, from this you get Yoga Arurasya, I was looking back, Yoga Arurasya, so Aruruksha ho, one who is Arodum Ichu. Tam Arodum Ichu. What does he want to mount? Literally, uh, one who is wanting to go on the pedestal of what? Become an expert in something. What? So, that karma will be yoga. So, that is clear in the uh, Yoga Rudasya. So, one who is Yoga Arurukshu and another is Yoga Rudha. One who has already gone on the pedestal, one who has already uh, capable. So one who is wanting to do dhyana and the other who is able to do dhyana, samartaha. This yoga here has the meaning of dhyana because the chapter is dhyana yoga. Dhyana yoga rudasya and on the one hand and the earlier one who is who? Aruruksha, yoga, yoga rurukshu. So one who is interested to do yoga is one and the other who is capable to do yoga. So Arurukshoho Munehe, what is the Karanam? Kim Karanam Uchyate, what is the means for one who is desirous of doing yoga, Dhyana Yoga, of that kind of a Muni, for that kind of a Muni, what is the Karana? What is the means? Karma Karanam Uchyate. So Karma Yogam, Munehe Yogam, Karma ka, so yeah, actually uh, there, here itself you have the word Yoga, so you don't have to bring it from this. Yogam Arurukshoho, Yogam Arurukshoho Munehe, 
for a muni who is interested to yoga in second case for aruruksho karma for uh, the dhatu in aruruksha aru so aruruksha aruruksha is the dhatu aruruksho ho mune he kim aruruksho or kam aruruksha yogam yogam aruruksho ho mune he karanam karma uchyate or karma karanam uchyate both ways you can say karma is said to be the means for that person but once he has he becomes capable of for yoga capable of doing dhyana yoga so yoga arurasya tasyeva the same aruruksho once he becomes capable arur yoga arurasya tasyeva shamaha karana muchyate shamaha is what upar withdrawal even in the mind so shamaha is there then dama is not possible shama dama although dama is read after shamaha both ways it is can be explained but generally you withdraw from activity and then you withdraw from mental activity also once you have withdrawn from the mental activity then uh, external uh, kriya is not possible really because you plan it in the mind and then act it out so here it is said shamaha karanam uchyate so he should not even have mental activity indulging in karma therefore uh, you cannot say that this fellow will who has shamaha will go and do karma not possible so shama itself refutes a possibility of karma so this shows that yoga ruda if a person is yoga ruda already able to do nididhyasana then he should drop everything and take to sanyasa this is the uh, meaning here so that becomes the karana karana muchyate otherwise he cannot remain yoga ruda he will keep on flipping if you indulge in karma then you will get tied up with the world so this is the meaning of the third shloka so bhagwan bhashyakar says that third shloka uh, bhagwan krishna would not have uh, taught he would not have said that the shama is the means if karma should be yavajiva yavajiva so it is said here na arukshor muner yogam karma karana muchyate iti visheshana there is a visheshana there specifically that shama is the karana there arukshah one who is that muni who is already capable of dhyana arudasya cha shama shamena eva sambandha karanat and shama alone shama karana muchyate there shama has been said to be the karana and that sambandha with shama alone is important there it is shown that only shama is karana there he should not be doing karma because he already is capable of doing dhyana निधिध्यासन आरुक्षो आरुडस्य च शमः कर्म च उभयम कर्तव्यत्वेन अभिप्रेतम चेत् स्यात् देन ही टेक्स द हाइपोथेसिस एज टू इफ व्हाट पूर्वपक्षी इज सेइंग दैट यावत् जीवम वन हैज टू डू कर्म एज लॉन्ग एज वन इज अलाइव इफ दैट हैड बीन इंटेंडेड बाय भगवान कृष्ण देन बोथ ही शुड डू सो आरुक्षो हो आरुडस्य च since aruruksha is already doing both and arudasya cha he is also doing both cha shamah karma cha ubhayam both shama and karma withdrawing and karma withdrawing from so shamah is withdrawal actually it is withdrawal and karma cha ubhayam kartavyatnu abhipretam sya chet sya or sya chet had it been intended to be said that both should be done by both then तदा आरुरुक्षो हो आरुडस्य च इति शमकर्म विषय भेदेन विशेषणम विभाग करणम च अनर्थकम स्यात् सो इफ यू रीड द एडजेक्टिव्स देयर व्हाट हैज बीन सेड देयर आरु आरुरुक्षो हो दैट मुनि ही इज आरुरुक्ष देयर इज अ विशेषण हु इज स्पेसिफिकली सेगमेंटेड आउट एज वन हु इज डिजायरस ऑफ डूइंग योगा एंड द अदर इज ऑलरेडी आरुडा योगा रुडा ही इज ऑलरेडी kind of settling in yoga so that is the visheshana thereby you have segmented uh, you have created a division in two types of sadhakas now one sadhaka who is uh, is under an undergrad so to say an undergraduate and the other is already a graduate so this kind of a di- differentiation is shown there and shama karma vishaye bhedena shama is the means for one for the latter and karma is the means for the earlier so shama karma vishaye bhedena विशेषणम विभाग करणम च अनर्थकम स्यात् इट वुड बी मीनिंगलेस टू मेक दैट काइंड ऑफ अ डिवीजन इन इन द मींस एज वेल एज द एज द साधका 
both have been divided there. That would be meaningless. So, uh, Puro Pakshi now answers to this kind of a thing. He says, why division is possible, right? Why is the divi division not possible? He says that Tatra Ashraminam Kaschit Yoga Marurukshu Bhavati Arudasya Kaschit. So, he says, there <coughs> some would be desirous of doing yoga. Some would be, someone would be already attaining yoga, have, would have attained yoga or capability to do yoga. But there are other categories also, therefore division is possible. This is anye cha, anye na arurukshavaha, na cha arudaha. And there can be a third category, who is ne most of us who are neither interested in doing dhyana nor are we capable to do dhyana. So, there is a third category which is the masses. Therefore, tana peksha. So, comparing and segmenting from the third category. So, sadhakas are separated out from the third category. The division that you are showing between one who is desirous and one who has attained yoga, desirous of doing yoga and one who has attained yoga, capability of yoga, yoga samarcham, that division is not between them. The Puro Pakshi is saying that they are on one side and the division is from, the separation is from Anye na arurukshavaha na cha arudaha who are neither interested nor are they capable. So thereby that division is still possible. It is not anarthaka. I can still make it meaningful says the Puro Pakshi. Tan apeksha. Tan is it. Compared to this third category, Tan apeksha arurukshoho arudasya iti visheshanam vibhagakaranam cha upapadyateva iti chet. So he says if I offer this solution as to making the verse meaningful even with the division but not with your kind of division with the division that there is a third category that Bhagavan has in mind and he is separating these two sadhakas and still wants them to do both karma and yoga no, sorry karma and uh, follow shama as well as karma tasyeva iti vachanat so therefore he is saying that you have to follow karma and dhyana both you can follow so, Bhagavan Bhashyakara says, no, that is not possible. Why? In this same shloka, you have to do Mimamsa. Tasya eva. Tasya eva. So, you cannot say put both together in one category. Because, Shamaha Tasya eva karan muchyate. Kasya prayaha yaha arurukshuhu. Tasya eva. So, one who is now, now, who has become Arudaha. Earlier he was Arurukshuhu. So, Tasya Eva Iti Vachana. By saying that the same Sadaka who was desirous of yoga earlier of, and now he is capable. Thereby the same person is divided. Now he is segmented. So, the category of Sadaka may include both. But in that Shloka there is a division in the Sadaka category who was earlier an Arurukshuhu he should do karma and one who has become arudaha, he should not do karma, he should practice shamaha. So, tasya eviti vachana. So, this kind of mivamsa, without this you don't get the idea what is going on. So, that is possible only in bhashya and vyakthya, tika. These will tell you what is the tatparya there. That tatparya nishya has to be done. Otherwise, you can say, okay, both are okay. What is it? Let me do both. But it will not work. Mivamsa shastra. Uh, is continuing in Vedanta. Vedanta is Uttar Mimamsa. So, Mimamsa has to continue when you analyze the Pada and, and you do the Vakya. What is the meaning of the Vakya? Further you will see more Mimamsa. Tasya Veti Vachana. Punaha Yoga Grahanacha. And he says that Punaha Yoga Grahanacha. What has been said? Yogam Arurukshuhu and then Yoga Arudaha. Thereby Punaha Yoga Grahanacha. Yoga has been used again in the Pada Yoga Arudasya Iti. There were what is shown that Yogam Arurukshuhu and then Yoga Arudaha. These are two separate set of people, people separate set of people, but it is not that uh, they are separate in the sense that they never had an overlap. It is the second category which has come out of the first. So, it has come out of the same group of sadhakas which was wanting to 
desirous of yoga. Thereby yoga has been used again and said yoga ruda sita seva. The seva yoga ruda sita. Now yoga ruda. Earlier uh, yoga yogam aru rukshuhu. Iti yaha asit purvam yogam aru rukshuhu. So prior purvam yaha yogam aru rukshuhu asit. One who was early, earlier desirous of attaining yoga, tasyeva arudasya, yoga arudasya. That same person has now become arudaha, therefore tasyeva arudasya, evakara is there, tasyeva. Shamaha eva kartavya, thereby shamaha eva kartavya. This eva can be brought to shama and shown that tasya arudasya, shamaha eva kartavya. Not karma, natu karma. Thereby, kartavya karanam yoga phalam prati ucchate iti. Kartavya shamaha karanam ucchate means what? Yoga phalam prati karanam ucchate. It will lead to yoga phala. It will lead to this yoga phala because he is yoga ruda now. This yoga ruda, if he practices yoga continuously and he practices shamaha, he withdraws from all karma, then he will get the yoga phala. That becomes the means. Thereby, yoga phalam prati shamaha karana muchyate iti. Atona yavajyam kartavyatta praptihi kasya chidepi karmanaha. Therefore, no karma needs to be done till the last breath. So, ato yavajyam, as long as one is alive, no karma has, has a kartavyata, kartavyattum. Yoga vibrashta vachanacha, further he takes another shloka also. Uh, so, I will not go to the shloka, I will just mention towards the uh, progress of the chapter, towards the end of the chapter rather, uh, not the end, but then uh, uh, Arjuna asks, a person has given up, so here you are saying shamak karana muchyate, thereby one gives up karma. So, uh, he has given up karma, which is nitya naimitika karma, obviously it was, he was not doing kamya karma. So, a person who was doing nitya naimitika karma, he gives up and then he gets to Vididhyasana, he gets to Dhyana Yoga. So, Shamaha, Shamaha is doing by giving up Karma. Now, what happens if he does not attain the Phala in this life? This Yoga Phalam Prati, Shamaha Karana Muchyate, that is okay. But what if even after practicing Shamaha, he is not successful to get the Yoga Phala, which is Moksha? What happens then? So, he is Ubhaya Vibrashta. What happens? He is fallen from, uh, here it says Yoga Vibrashta. I am just giving a, uh, giving a, what is the perspective of Arjuna. Arjuna asks that he is neither here nor there. He has given up karma, so he is not protected. Kavacha is gone. Now, uh, he is practicing Samaha, but he didn't attain the Yoga Phala. So, what is his Gati? She has not got moksha and he has not got karma phala. Where is he? So it is like the masses, these anyachana, aruruksha, nacha, arura, and they are not practicing karma also, fourth category. Karma also they are not practicing because you have given up karma. But having, even after having practiced yoga, phala is not there. So it is as good as not, uh, not doing it. This is in Arjuna's mind. So, the person will be neither here nor there. What happens to that kind of a person? So, we will see when we reach there, what is the answer. But here, Bhagavan Bhashyakara looks at it and he says, Yaha, uh, Yoga Viprashta Vachanacha Grahasthasya Chet karmanaha, Karminaha Yoga Vihitaha Shashtya Adhyaye Sa Yoga Viprashta Api Karma Gatim Karma Phalam Prapnoti Iti Tasya Nasha Shanka Anupapannasya if uh, Arjuna has asked the question, a person who has given up karma and is practicing yoga and it, yoga vibrashta, he does not, yoga vibrashta means what? He if fallen from yoga, either he is fallen from yoga or he does not attain yoga phala. For whatever reasons, uh, life is too short is or rather he the, it, there was, wasn't sufficient time for him to uh, get nishta, complete nishta, or uh, he uh, he fell for whatever reason. He had a fall uh, from yoga. He didn't practice it that kind of seriousness. He was negligent for whatever reasons. He was yoga vibrashta. 
So this yoga vibrastha should not have any worry if he is doing karma simultaneously. The way Puro Pakshi is saying, let him do karma also, yavat jiva. He is alive. Even the person who is practicing shama, as per the Puro Pakshi is alive. So Arjuna is asking about that person who is alive. Yoga vibrastha. So that person who is yoga vibrastha, why will there be a question as to what is his gati? Because it is clear that he is doing karma, he is protected by karma. So there should not be a doubt that kartavya karma, one who is doing kartavya karma, he will have a bad gati, he will have a good gati. So that kind of a question wouldn't come. And since the question has arisen, and similarly like you have seen earlier, Bhagavan Bhashakar has said, whenever there was a question of this uh, uh, Saha Samuchya, that time he said that Arjuna has asked a question and Bhagavan uh, Krishna has answered it without saying that what kind of a nonsensical question are you asking. He has not said that. He has answered that question. Thereby the question is valid. And the question is valid only because the person who is practicing yoga, jhana yoga, has given up karma. That is the only possibility. Otherwise that yoga vibrashta vachana is not possible. Therefore yoga vibrashta vachana cha grahastha se chet karminaha. This karmi, grahastha who is a karmi who is practicing karma as per the puro pakshi who is doing yoga also. Yoga vihita. If yoga is prescribed for the same person who is continuing to do karma, being in Grahastha Ashrama, Shashti Adhyaya in this sixth chapter, then Saha Yoga Vibrashta Api, even if he falls from that yoga which is prescribed for him, he has not given up karma. Then Karma Gatim, Karma Phalam Prapnoti, he will attain that Karma Gati, Karma Phali, whatever karma he has done, that Karma Phala he will get. Why will he ask about what is his Gati? Prapnoti Iti. Tasya nasha shanka anupapannasya. There cannot be a doubt as to that yoga person who is yoga vibrashta, but who is doing karma, who was not successful in uh, dhyana yoga, he was doing karma thereby, his nasha is not possible. So doubt regarding that his nasha is also not possible. Anupapannasya. Avashyam hi krutam karma kamyam nityam va. Mokshasya nityatvat anarabhyatve swam phalam arabata eva. Arabata eva. Avashyam arabata eva. The karma that this person who is doing uh, yoga, that person is doing karma also. This is a Puro Pakshi perspective. As in uh, what Puro Pakshi is suggesting, Yavajyo, he is doing karma also. For that kind of a person, the karma, Kritam karma, whatever karma he is done, Kamyam nityam, whether it is nitya karma or Kamya karma. That will not have nasha. Swarga, it will give you swarga if he is doing karma karma. He is doing nitya karma. Then nitya karma, whatever gati is there, he will get that. Moksha se nitya tvat anarabhyatve, except for moksha. So this is uh, put in between by Bhagavan Bhashyakara to show that neither kamya nor nitya karma is going to directly lead to moksha. Why? Moksha is not a result of any karma. It is not a result of kamya karma, definitely. It is not even the result of Nitya Karma. Nitya Karma can give you Chitta Shuddhi, Ishwara Nugraha. It cannot give you uh, Moksha directly. Why? It is not a result of any Karma. Nitya Tvat. Because it is Nitya. Moksha is Nitya. You are always free. Even in the Baddha Avastha you are free. You just, due to Ajnana you add some layers and then you consider yourself as Baddha. Moksha is not generated for you. Only the Bandhana is removed. Bandhana, the Ajnana Krita Bandhana is removed by Jnana, Moksha is Siddha, is uh, Nitya, Anarabhyatve, Anarabhyatve, is anya, anara, this uh, Moksha is not begun, is not created by any phala, so Anarabhyatve, what, what is the possible result for Kamya and Nitya, Swam phalam, their own phala, which is not Moksha, so Kamya will give you Swarga Ityadi and Nitya, whatever uh, Chitta Shuddhi, it can give phalam arabhate eva. They will definitely give a result. They will begin a result. Nityasya cha karmanaha veda pramanava buddhatva phalena bhavitavyam iti avochama. And he says, uh, okay, kamya karma, if there is a doubt as to kamya karma gives uh, swarga phala, what will nitya karma give? I had mentioned last time that uh, Nivamsaka say that nitya karma which cannot be, uh, where there is no particular phala shown, all of them have swarga as their gati because swarga is sukha rupa. It need not be swarga as a uh, 
the way people say he will reach heaven. It is, need not be necessarily a loka. Swarga is uh, Sukha. And Sukha is the goal. Therefore, Nitya will also have some Sukha. Uh, thereby, Nitya Sacha Karma Naha. Nitya Karma, for Nitya Karma also, Veda Pramana Avabuddhattva. Because it is revealed by Veda, which is a Pramana. And Veda talks about Nitya Karma. It cannot be without any result. It will have, uh, have result, definitely. Phalena Bhavitavyam. Therefore, it should have a result. And thereby, Iti Avochama. We say that, Nitya also has a result because it is revealed by Veda Pramanyam. Anyatha Vedasya Anarthakya Prasanga Diti. If you say that Nitya does not, Nitya karma has no phala, Kamya karma has a phala, then otherwise, if you think that, that uh, Nitya karma has no phala, then Veda will become Anarthakya, uh, it will become Anartha. Anarthakya Prasanga, it will become meaningless. Why does uh, Shruti talk about Nitya Karma when it has no results? Why should anyone do it? Nacha Karmani Sati Ubhay Vrashta Vachanam Arthavata Now, uh, he is explaining that the person who is uh, as per Puro Pakshi, Yavajyam Karma Kuriyat, he should do Karma. Then, that person is doing Karma, although he has failed in Yoga. So, Nacha Karmani Sati Ubhay Vrashta Vachanam Arthavata Then, Ubhay Vrashta Vachanam you are saying that he has fallen from yoga as well as karma. First, first it is being yoga vibrashta vachana cha. This is showing that he is yoga vibrashta, he has fallen from yoga. If he has fallen from yoga, then the doubt should not be there because karma has a gati. But then Arjuna also asks that he, if he has, he has given up both, ubhay vibrashta vachanam is also not possible. It is meaningless. Arthavatna syas. Why? Because he is doing karma. How can he have fall from karma Karma also? He will not have a fall from karma because he is doing karma. So, Ubhaya Vibrashta Vachana will not become meaningful. Karma Naha Vibramsha Karana Nupapatte Because karma will, will not have a phala which is, uh, I mean, he will not have a destroyed phala. Phala will always be there. So, Vibramsha Karana Nupapatte. If you are doing kar karma, then its phala cannot be destroyed. It will be it will accrue to you. Thereby, she says that both should not be done together. Now, Puropakshi says, there is another possibility to look at. Karma Kritam Ishware Sanyasya Ityataha Kartuhu Karma Phalam Narabhate Itiche. That karma that you are saying is Vibhramsha Karana Nupapatte and you are saying that Phalena Bhavitavyam. It will have a result, karma. I am saying that, Puropakshi says that, you look at this possibility, he has offered the phala to Ishvara. Ishare Sanyasya, it has been said earlier in the earlier chapters, Kritam Karma Ishare Sanyasya, you offer the results to the to Bhagavan, you offer uh, karma also to Bhagavan. That is what your Prasad Buddhi and uh, uh, this thing, uh, the, the offering the uh, results as well as the karma to the Lord, that is your karma yoga, entire karma yoga is that and thereby ityata kartu karma, the karma of this karta, which kind of a karma, who has offered his uh, kritam karma and its result to the Lord, thereby phalam naravate, here it is said kritam karma, so he offers his karma itself, ishrarpana buddhi, ishrarpana buddhi is offering karma and prasada buddhi if you leave aside also phala, Phala, let him offer, let him not offer. If he has offered karma, then phala will not be there, obviously. So, this is the thinking of the Puro Pakshi. Ityadha kartu karma phala, karma, kartu karma phalam na arabate. It is chet. If we say that, that karma being offered to the Lord, it will not generate any result. So, Bhagavan Bhashyakara says, very nice answer. He says, na ishware sanyasasya he says that it is not that uh, we are not saying you offer the karma to the Lord so that you don't have any result. In fact, you have more result. Why? Because Chitta Shuddhi is not the only result. Really, we don't talk about it much, but then it is not that Chitta Shuddhi is the only result. Even if we take Chitta Shuddhi as result, that is the result we talk about. But there is more result. Chitta Shuddhi will lead to moksha, thereby there is more result. 
or it can also be said that other than Chitta Shuddhi, Bhagavan will give you some result of that Punya Karma also. It is not only Chitta Shuddhi, you will get some, that Phala also you will get. Plus you will get Chitta Shuddhi, uh, like the, you know, the, remember the story of the axe, the, he, uh, as, as a, uh, in childhood we have learned the story of the axe, the silver axe and the golden axe. So he gets all that. So if you don't have uh, Akanksha for the Phala, you will get more Phala. Ishwara is kind, he will say that you are, you are not interested in phala, so he will give you the phala also and he will give you chitta shuddhi. So he says, Ishwara sanyasasya adhikatara phala hetu topapatte, hetu topapatte, there is, uh, there is a upapatti of what uh, this adhikatara phala hetu hu, hetu topapatte. So that will give rise to that sanyasa, ish, you offer unto the Lord that has, that, that holds the cause for phala which is more, more than just doing it for phala. Spuro Bhakshi argues for this, he says, moksha ye he says, all that he is doing is for moksha, then let, let it give phala in the form of moksha, what is the problem, moksha ye he explains what does he mean. Svakarmanam Krutanam Ishwari Sanyasa Moksha Eva. Whatever he, the uh, Karma Yogi is offering, he is offering for Moksha. Therefore, all that will not give you any other phala but Moksha. Na phalantaraya Yoga Saitaha. He says that it is not that this Yoga Saita that he is doing with Yoga, he is doing Karma and Yoga both together and he is offering his karma to the Lord, therefore moksha eva, his idea is moksha eva, that is the reason he is offering, therefore moksha will be the result of that, he will not have any result there and thereby what happens if he gives up yoga and or he just gives up karma, if he just gives up karma or he gives up, he falls from yoga then what will happen, yoga sahita this Karma is for moksha, which is yavajyam karma. He should do yavajyam karma also he should do, yoga also he should do, jhana yoga. But yoga chivrashtaha, if he is just doing yoga, then thereby vibrashtaha, yoga chivrashtaha, what will happen? Both have been taught here or he has given up both. So thereby he should yoga chivrashtaha, just doing yoga when karma has also been taught, if he does yoga alone, then he is not protected at all, he will have a fall. So that is the reason I am saying he should do both. So he is taking the same thing and flipping it on uh, the Siddhanti, saying that yoga chayabrashta, he has fallen from yoga and phalantaraya na bhavati, it is only for moksha that he is doing, therefore karma and yoga they, uh, while doing karma and yoga, yoga chayabrashta. So he is doing karma, yoga chayabrashta, one possibility. Or he stopped doing karma, which was prescribed for him, and then yoga chayabrashta, he has fallen from yoga, ityataha tamprati nasha shanka yukta evaiti Therefore, he will have a fall, he will have nasha. So doubt of nasha is possible from Arjuna's perspective, even when both are taught, because when both are taught, he can have fall from yoga. Therefore, yoga chayabrashta is possible. Bhagavan Bhashyakara says, Na eka kiyat chittatma nirashira parigraha brahmachari vrate sitaha iti karma sanyasa vidhana. He says, yoga chayabrashta, if you say that only one, doing only one, he had a fall and then he uh, therefore is vibrashta and then therefore there is nasha and that doubt of nasha is possible and nasha is also possible from the perspective of the puro pakshi. Why? Because karma and yoga both have been taught. He dropped karma and thereby had a fall. So you, in yoga also he had a fall. Even if he had continued yoga, yoga chayabrashta. So here vibrashta he is taking yoga chayabrashta. One possible meaning is he had fall from yoga. But other possible meaning is that he gave up karma and he continued only yoga, which is the primary meaning in the perspective of the Puro Pakshi. He says that yoga chayabrashta has a different meaning here. He says that due to yoga alone he is vibrashta, giving up karma. So, gave up karma 
एंड कंटिन्यूड योगा बट योगा चे प्रश्न सो भगवान भाष्यकार असे टेक्स दैट मीनिंग व्हिच पूर्व पक्षी हैज इन माइंड बिकॉज ही इज ही इज सेइंग दैट बोथ आर टू बी डन देयर बाय भगवान भाष्यकार असे दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज योगा चे प्रश्न इज नॉट पॉसिबल ही सेज एकाकी यत चित्त आत्मा निराशीर अपरिग्रह इज अ श्लोका इन 10 इन दिस चैप्टर एकाकी वन हु इज वन हु इज अलोन अलोन एकाकी यत चित्त आत्मा सो वन हु इज यू नो इन सॉलिट्यूड अ पर्सन इन सॉलिट्यूड यत चित्त आत्मा कीपिंग हिज माइंड इन कंट्रोल निराश ही अपरिग्रह ही डज नॉट हैव एनी एक्सपेक्टेंसी इन इन कर्म फला कर्म ऑल दैट इज गॉन एंड अपरिग्रह ही इज नॉट गोइंग आफ्टर यू नो एक्यूमुलेटिंग थिंग्स व्हिच इज अ गृहस्थ धर्म ही कैन नॉट बी अपरिग्रह निराश ही अपरिग्रह इफ ही इज अ गृहस्थ गृहस्थ इज इन फैक्ट इन टॉट इन तैतिर उपनिषद दैट अन्नम भव कुरियात सो यू हैव टू कलेक्ट अ लॉट बिकॉज यू हैव टू डू दाना फॉर द अदर थ्री आश्रमस आल्सो यू आर द सपोर्ट गृहस्थ सो देयर बाय अपरिग्रह एका की ऑल दिस हैज बीन टॉट it cannot be that yoga ch vibrashta yoga has been taught this sanyasa has been taught here brahmachari vratesita and he said that he should remain a brahma brahmachari in the brahmachari cha brahmacharya vrata that is taught in the 14th shloka how can you remain as a brahmachari if you are in grahastha ashram so thereby also this brahmachari vrata is not possible इति कर्म संन्यास विधाना देयर बाय कर्म संन्यास अलोन इज टॉक क्षम कारण मुच्यते दैट इज एक्सप्लेन बाय कर्म संन्यास विधाना थ्रू दिस श्लोक नच अत्र ध्यान काले स्त्री सहायत्व आशंका एंड इफ यू थिंक दैट दिस पर्सन इज डूइंग ध्यान दैट टाइम सपोर्ट ऑफ वाइफ इज आल्सो नीडेड देयर इज नो सपोर्ट ऑफ वाइफ नीडेड देयर इज नो स्पाउस नीडेड देयर यू आर डूइंग ध्यान सो ध्यान इज डन अलोन you cannot say that samuhika dhyana also when you do not everyone is doing dhyana together literally they are sitting together but they are doing individual dhyana so dhyana kale stri sahayatva ashanka atra nasti he says there is no expectancy of the wife stri here is why uh, because uh, puro pakshi is saying let him remain in grahast ashram and let him do both karma as well as uh, dhyana yoga so during dhyana kala you cannot say that he has uh, some something has to be done by the wife as well in karma agnihotra she has to do something she ha- she has to bring the fire she she has to uh, help him when doing the offering also she has to make the offering together he has to do it along with her so that time stri sahatva asha, uh, ashanka can be there but in dhyana it cannot be there ये न एकाकित्वम विधियते देयर बाय एकाकी व्हिच हैज बीन टॉट हियर एकाकित्वम ही हैज टू बी इन सॉलिट्यूड दैट सॉलिट सॉलिट्यूड कैन नॉट बी टॉट अनलेस द पर्सन इज अ सन्यासी दैट ही हैज टू रिमेन इन सॉलिट्यूड देयर सो दैट इज पॉसिबल ओनली फॉर अ सन्यासी ये न एकाकित्वम विधियते अदरवाइज इफ ही इज इन इन गृहस्थ आश्रम दैट टाइम देयर इज नो पॉइंट इन सेइंग दैट इन ध्यान यू बी अलोन बिकॉज़ इन ध्यान एनीवे ही इज अलोन in sanyasa it can be taught because sanyasi this ekaki he has to move away from the society he has to move away in solitude to practice dhyana so there it is possible here it is not possible in grahastha ashrama it makes no sense to say that uh, in dhyana you be alone dhyana anyway he will be alone brahmachari vratesthitah so of course there can be doubt that in sanyasi also why ekaki is needed sanyasi is anyway alone but then it is contrasted with this as to here it makes sense that ekaki is a person who is a sanyasi brahmachari vratishtita is also in sense so nacha atra dhyana kali stri sahayatva ashanka yena ekaki to vidyate nacha grahastasya nirashir aparigraha ityadi vachanam anukulam you don't have asha and you don't have parigraha you don't accumulate that is not possible to be told to a grahastha so nirashi if you don't agree here at least nirashi aparigra in the same shloka how can a grahastha ask to be not have any asha and not accumulate anything he has to accumulate for the society he has, has to support his family thereby iti ityadi vachanam anukulam na bhavati ubhay vibrashta prashna anubhatte and ubhay vibrashta you are forgetting this ubhay vibrashta he cannot be 
Prashnanu Gopatna, that there is no tenability of that kind of a question. If he is remaining at home and doing his karma, he cannot be Ubhayi Vrashta. Because he can fall from yoga, but he cannot fall from karma because he has already been doing that karma. He cannot have a fall from karma, he is doing Nitya karma or uh, Kamya karma. Thereby, it is not possible. We will look at the rest in the uh, next part half. Any questions? Okay, no questions. I'll see you in the next part. Huh? Namaste.